there is going to be a transformation in your life in the name of Jesus. I want us to understand that until your mind moves, your body will never move. Until your mind moves, your body will never move. Even winning in athletics is a mind thing. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says that do not conform to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For all these five nights that we have been here, it is so that your mind will be renewed. Because we are in, the, we are in society where negative things are being programmed in our minds. We have an environment that is so polluted. And that's why we were told by God in Micah chapter 2 verse 10 that where you are at the moment it is not just physically, but your mind is so polluted that that will destroy you. There are many things in our lives that are as a result of the way we think. You know, there are times that you realize that the way you are thinking is so bad that you begin to laugh at yourself. I don't know about you. When a light comes to you and says, oh, so all this while I've been believing this nonsense. What you believe will determine where you get to. Hallelujah. Arise ye and depart. Many people would have been saying, why must I depart? I love where I am. But God continues to say that, for this is not your rest. You may feel comfortable over here, but leave your comfort zone and move to the next level. Many of us feel comfortable at where we are today. Very soon, responsibilities will increase. And you know that where you are is not enough. So God is saying, don't sleep at where you are. Today, you may not really understand. Maybe you have just finished school, SHS, and you have not continued. And you think that is all. Very soon, you will marry. Realize that, oh, not knowing, this my SHS salary can never take me far. Therefore, I need a higher one. Maybe you have first degree and you are going to your family. And you think that is all. You get to a job and you realize that first degree is for messengers. And you'll be there. If you don't go and add something to it, you will still be a messenger. So at that level, you realize that there is a need to move to the next level. And that is why we have been doing this all through this training so that you, you begin to think that the expertise you have today may not be able to solve tomorrow's problem. Many people refuse to move to the next level. All because they thought what they had is more than enough. You know, it, they used to use typewriter those days. And those, when they say someone is a, a stenographer, then that person is a higher level of a typewriter. A, 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 a typewriter, whatever they call him. Or a secretary. But I got to a time that they changed all those things and now computer. And those people, to some of them say, hey, what can I say computer? Cool. And they know only, they sacked all of them from job. I don't know where you find yourself today, but I want you to know that the, where you are today will definitely become your failure point. Years ago, when we were the first badge and second badge of SHS, you get a get 24, your family will do party for you because you qualify for university. Today, they get 12. You feel like writing remedials. Because you will not really get the cost of your choice. And that is why every blessed day, you must keep on moving to the next level. You must not sit on your horse. You must not really uh, sit on your horse and, and say that, okay, where I am is more than enough. No. Where you are is not who you are. Because who you are is far greater than where you are. Your potential is greater and bigger than you can ever think about. And that's why we are not here comparing yourself with another person. No. 
you are here comparing yourself with your definitely your abilities and your potentials. What has God said concerning me? If God says, this is where I'm taking you to, and you try to end at the Red Sea, you have never gotten there. God says, I'm taking you to the promised land, and you get to the Jericho, and you settle over there. You are not there. You are, you are a stranger in Jericho. Until you have gotten to your promised land. I'm asking someone tonight. You must really know where God is taking you to. The sky is no more the limit. The sky is now the starting point. People have gone beyond going to the moon. People are now buying land in the moon. I don't know who has been giving them indenture. But people, have, people are trying to go for holidays in the moon. So if you are here and all that you are looking for is just a thin over you. You are just frolicking around. You never go far. Because people are moving very, very fast. And that's why we're told that you need to be exposed. Exposure. Until you are exposed, you may, you may become a local champion. And local championism will only destroy you. The Bible says, for this is not your rest. Why? Because it is polluted. What you have is expired. By the time you had it, they gave it six months. But now, it is one year. It is polluted. Leave where you are and move to the next level. I don't know whether you are also thinking through. But myself, I'm thinking through. You too, you are thinking through, even as a ministry. Maybe the level we are now is polluted. When we got here first, it was so fresh. But it's outdated. Can I just imagine if you see a man walking on the street with, you know, the, those days, you have the bag over here and he has a 310 food over here. What will you say to him? Will you say he's a bugger? Years ago, you would say he's a bugger. Everyone will go to his house to go and look at how the phone looks like. But today, you say, where do you cross in the power? Why? He has refused to move. He is still resting in the old place. I used to be this. I used to be this. It's a curse. You used to be. Today, who are you? And that's what the Bible said that because the place is polluted. What you are having now doesn't speak anymore. This SHS degree paper that you are having, paper you are having is too, is too light. First degree you are having is too light. It wouldn't take you anywhere. People are having double masters now. People are having triple masters. And after masters, they even go and do professional course. Why? Because people are running. Let me tell you something. It is a global world now. It's a global village now. The same job you are looking for, the Chinese are all looking for the same job. Don't you see that? Know that Chinese also come for interview here. The same way they can also call you for interview somewhere else. So it's a global world. The way you are running your race, can you really run with an international person? When you meet a professional, also in your field, how will you look like? It should tell you that where you are is so polluted, you must move to the next level. Because people are moving day by day. Look at, at this. If you don't see the way people are moving to the next level, look at iPhone. Today, they finish iPhone 12. Tomorrow, they say iPhone 12 Pro. The next one, iPhone 13. Then, until you, you lose count. Because every day, they are adding something. Every day, they are adding something on. And you are there, and you have iPhone 4. Long time, and you think you are a bugger. I don't know who I'm, I, I'm, I'm staring up tonight. I'm going to give you the keys. But you know, you, the, you, you must feel something in your spirit. Because very soon, what you have will be nothing. Ah, there are houses I see today eh, that when they even give it to you for rent, you may not rent. But those days, it belongs to the rich. Hey, they can't even have money to paint. True or false? So if they, if they were sitting on that one and they were not doing something, today they will be begging. Any success you don't update will become outdated. Let me say that again. Any success you don't update will become outdated. That's why there are books that are outdated. They are antiquated. They can be kept in the, in the museum. I pray that no one will be kept in the museum in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you are, you are kept in the museum, you become antiquated. You know, you have become 
outmoded. You have become an old thing. People come and look at you. They used to be like this. You know, it is an African thing. When we go to the, when, we, when you go to UK, you want to go to London Bridge. You know, classical technological things that they have done. That's what you go, want to go and look at. But when they come here, they want to go and look at the bones of Kwame Nkrumah. They want to go and look at our museum. So they are keeping you in your old days. Please never join those who keep on saying the good old days. They are keeping you in the old. The good old days. Oh, I used to be. I used to be. That's what order we have. Let's maintain our culture when they are moving. Say, so when, when they want to come and laugh at us, you know, making mockery of people make you happy. Is that not so? So they'll come to Africa. Then we take them to our zoo. We think we have something now for them to come and have a look. They always say this is more backward. So we are keeping the 1940s for them and the 80s for them and they are moving into the uh, uh, 30s. Some of them have moved from 2022 already. They are already in 2050. And yet we are still sitting at where we are sitting. Maybe extrapolate it to your own level now. That your own level. Can't you see your classmates? Can't you see other people are moving? And you even look better than they are. What prevents you from going? Many a times, it is mental limitation. The way you think about yourself, the way others think about you. But tonight, that mental limitation shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Because the place is polluted. And once it is polluted, it shall destroy you. It shall do what? It shall destroy you. Even with a sore distraction, the distraction you are about to receive because you are stagnating, because you are still at the right at, at, at the same place over and over, this thing will destroy you and it will give you a massive distraction. Don't wait until you are destroyed. Move. Hallelujah. Now let's look at Apostle Paul. Are we being ambitious? Are we just trying to do something? Look at Apostle Paul. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13 to 16. This is Apostle Paul. The man who wrote more than half of the New Testament. He said, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Say, forgetting those things which are behind. Until you forget the past, you shall never move on to the next level. Hey, all those who are commending you today, they are the same people who will condemn you tomorrow. You didn't get it. All those who are commending you today, they are the same people who will be condemning you tomorrow because of where you are. And I have started this example with all sense of responsibility and humility. I am a teacher. I was a teacher. But one thing is that one thing that made me left the teaching field as a pupil's teacher, whether the students come back and come and ask you, say, are you still here? So say, when will you leave? Then you are here, the same point you taught them, they will go and come and say, and you know, uh, now I am a medical doctor. Then you are still looking at yourself. At a point in time, you'll be feeling pity for yourself. It is no more for the love of the job. Now you are mentally stagnated and limited. Before it gets to that level, move. I love to teach primary school. Teaching too can be taught in the university, true of us. If it is teaching that you love, you can be a lecturer. You can be a lecturer. Don't settle for less. Oh, as for me, there it is this thing. If it is cooking that you want, the roadside one too. It is cooking. But you can also become like chicken licking. You can also become like KFC. You can also become like all those people that we talk about. There is another level you can get to. Don't be limited. Apostle Paul said, with all that I have done, I don't consider myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, forgetting the six A's I got, forgetting the proper marriage that I had, and people were giving me fast. Now the real marriage is there. What is the next level? And reaching forth unto those things which are before I remember I was so on fire for God. Eh? I used to pray 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. And now you are rather going back. And you say, I used to. I used to be on fire. Today, what, what are you? 
Now your eyes broke. Apostle Paul said, I forget the things of the past. And I am reaching forth. Listen, I am reaching forth unto those things which are before, not behind. We already know what is behind, but we don't know what is before, so we must move on. Bishop Oedipo ran one of the biggest, the largest church in the world. Yet, this man goes for evangelism every, every time. He is pressing on because there is nothing like limitation in this, in this agenda. He doesn't have tolerance for failure. I told you from the beginning that when you ride on a bicycle, when you stand on a bicycle, and you are not moving, and you start at the same place, maximum within three minutes you will fall. So stay at the same place over and over, you will fall. The things you are enjoying there today will not be there forever. There is a book that maybe when you work in town and you get it, please go and look for it. It's called Who Moved My Cheese? It has to talk about change. If you don't change, change will change you because change is changing every day. If you don't move, if you don't change, Change will change you. If you don't understand what I'm saying, go and ask Nokia. Stay at the same level over and over and over again. Change will change you. You are not upgrading. You are not building capacity. You are not adding on. And you are re still remaining the way you are. Change will change you. And this life is never fair at all. We were told that if you want a lion's share, then you must have a lion's heart. Is that what I'm saying? Verse 14, quickly. I press. I do what? I do what? I press. Moving to the next level. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press towards the mark. There is a mark where the price is of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 15. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. If you must be perfect, you must be moving on every blessed day. Don't stay at where you are. God says you have been around this place for too long. Change level. Move to the next level. Something must change. You know, sometimes when you are in an environment, people come and sit under the mango tree or come and sit under the neem tree and they are playing cards together. You will be stagnated. At a point, I'm change your environment. But the people you stay around with will determine what you become. Until your mind changes, your body will not change. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So the way God is revealing us unto us in this conference, that's what the Bible is saying. Verse 16. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same things. If you know you have achieved, then keep on upgrading. The very things that have brought you here, let that same thing push you to move on. Is someone getting my point? Am I speaking to someone? Are you sure? You say that if you know you have gotten to a certain level and you believe that the level you have gotten to you have achieved or you have attained, make sure that you don't go back. Make sure you are what? Upgrading. Hallelujah. So, transformation of mind is key. I want to encourage everyone as we, we, are, we are bringing the curtains to a, uh, close in this meeting, as we go, let's be thinking about this, that I cannot be at this same level for a long time. No, I cannot continue. Can't I see things are changing? Hey, today you are able to pay school fees, junior high school, very soon university. What you have been paying in three terms will now be a one term minus pocket money. <laughs> minus pocket money, minus books minus hostel so if where you are you think it's limited very soon, if you don't take care you'll be crying levels are changing, you can read 3 pages a day you get to invest in, now you need to read like 50, 15 pages a day, 20 pages a day you must build capacity, tell someone build capacity tell someone this don't sit at where you are change your level let me tell you something you know, if you stagnate, God wouldn't like you, the devil wouldn't like you. Should I, should I say that again? If you stagnate and stay at the same place for a long time, the devil will leave your matter for you. God will also leave your matter for you, I'm telling you. 
Because the Bible says, it's the Bible. It said, if you are not hot or cold, I will spew you out. Who will drink? So if you don't change your level, you'll be left alone. And eh, eh, my friends have left me. My, they have left. Once a classmate, not always a classmate. 20 children don't play for 20 years. That's why you must be upgrading. If they move, they will move. Because monkey play by sizes. If you don't want to, to be complaining, eh, eh, that's why you must also get. Because monkeys play by sizes. If you have been working together and you are not learning anything from me and you are only doing what you are doing, I will leave you there. I don't know if you have been blessed. This one is a charge. Just to charge you. Amen. So now, how do you get it? And how do you move to the next level? I have given you some points already. And I have also added one. That you must have what? A change of mind. And to have a change of mind, you must be exposed. You must read books. And also, you must check your association. Those three things will always inform your mind. The friends you keep, I remember when I was about to go to university, one friend came to tell me, he said, hey, four years old, I am no happy. He was still a landguard when I went and came back. <laughs> At a point time, you get frustrated, so death will take you early. He's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you know, sometimes, friends will be discouraging you, hey, but many song, they see you reading a book, I mean, oh, a professor. yes, I want to be. You know, people around you, when they speak words that will discourage you, hey, mini so much mini. When they start saying things that will discourage you, run from them. They are limiting you. They are freezing you. They are embalming you. Enough is never enough. <laughs> enough is never what? Enough. Have a change of mind. Check the books you read. Check the friends you keep. And look at your exposure. What are you exposed to? We were told that if out of six rich men, and you are a friend to six rich men, you'll be the number seven. Very soon, something will change in your life. Your thinking will change. Your abilities will change. I pray that our minds will be changed in the name of Jesus. That enough is enough of the stagnation. We are moving to the next level in Jesus' name. Amen. So the next point is that if you have to move to the next level, you must move to the next level by faith. You must do what? Move to the next level by faith. Why? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And when you are about to move, there is something called fear. Bible says, someone will say that, ah, there is, there is a lion on the way. If I go, the lion will chew me. What if I start in school and I'm not able to complete? What if I'm not able to pay my school fees again? What if you are able to pay? What if you are able to pay? Why don't we ask of the what, fee, what is positive? What if it doesn't work? What most of the things we are afraid of may never be. Fear is false evidence appearing real. So the opposite of fear is faith. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 quickly. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. What does it mean? Move to the next level. I see next level over there. There is a dormant thing inside of you. That dormant thing must come alive. And it will only come alive by staring. Are we seeing there? Are we seeing that one over there? Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. Stir it up. Let it come alive. Hey, who told you? All of us sit over here. In seven years' time, if you really want to have masters, even from junior high school, you can have it. Two of us. There is something inside of us. You know, Bible says, according to the power that we're getting us. That is faith. There is so much power in us that there is nothing you cannot do. Bible says that all things are possible to him that have faith. All things are possible to him that believes. There is nothing that you want to do that you cannot do with God on your side. With God. All things are possible. So the thing is already in you. When you stir yourself up, you will get there. A 70-year-old woman said she wants to learn 
a new thing, want to write a new book. She wrote three books before she died. There is nothing that I cannot do. Step up. Tell someone, step up. And move to your next level. Wherefore, I put thee, remember that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Look at the reason why he has not been staring. Verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. But the reason why he's not been staring those things up is because he's afraid. So Apostle Paul is saying, God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear. I declare and I declare that every spirit of fear tormenting anyone over here this evening, I come against it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. But of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I pray that may the Lord give us the spirit of faith in the name of Jesus. And you know, God says it, I believe it, he settles it. God says it, I believe it, he settles it. What has God said? And that's the reason why you must move forward. Deuteronomy chapter 28. From verse 3, coming down quickly. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. So when you move out, will you be blessed or not? Oh, what about if I move out and I'm not blessed? God says you'll be blessed. Whose report do you believe? Well, what if I try this and it doesn't work? God says it will work. Verse, verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of the, the body, and the fruit of the ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the increase of thy kind, and the flock of thy sheep. Verse 5. Blessed shall thou be thy basket and thy store. Six. Blessed shall thou be when thou come in, and blessed shall thou be when thou go out. So as a believer, geography doesn't determine your success. You didn't get it. Geography doesn't determine your success. Whether you are in America or you are in Ghana, you can still be a success. Oh, me can you Ghana? You will still be a lazy person in Abuchi. I don't know if you heard the latest news, very, very fresh news, that a man came from Abrochi, Boga. He has come to Ghana. You now, you are lazy. I don't know why lazy people love to give birth plenty like that. You now, you are lazy. You have given birth to 12 children. Now you have taken two for, 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 for ritual. God don't punish him. No wonder they have arrested him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thy enemies to rise up against thee, to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee in one way and they shall flee seven ways. Can't you see this one? So the enemies you are afraid of, what has God said? He said they will come against you in one way, but when they see your face, they will flee seven ways. Verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouse and in all that thou set thy hand. Are you seeing that one? When you put your hand on something, that business you are afraid of to do, God is saying when you put your hand on that business, it will bless it. And in all that thou set thy hand to do, and it shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. It's not by accident you are in Ghana. God can bless you in Ghana. There is money in Ghana. You must believe. God says it. I believe it. He settles it. Verse 9. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. Verse 10. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and thou shalt, they shall be afraid of thee. Verse 11, quickly. We are ending on 13. And the Lord shall make thee plenty in goods, and in the fruit of the body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, and the land which thy, the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give unto thee. 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all thy, the works of thy what? Hands. Is the, is, is the Bible so clear? Who wrote this thing over there? Did I write it? God said that I will bless the works of your hands. Everything you put your hand to do, God will bless it. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. The, you know, you must not enjoy always collecting from people. Borrow me two city. Borrow me five city. Borrow me ten city. Why will you also lend out to somebody? Step up. You may, today, you may not be learning to nations. At least, you may be learning to your family members. You too, you are learning somebody five CD. Instead of you always collecting two CD and three CD. Learn to someone. He said, and thou shalt not borrow. To move to the next level, take a step. That from today, I will not borrow again. No. 
can they go on now? A joffin. Borrowing and begging people every day for money stinks. Can I know about pay a joffin? I pray that none of us shall be a beggar in the name of Jesus. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Look at what God is saying. He'll make you what? The head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Aside this one, whose report do you believe? Oh, about Tobu. Whose report do you believe? God says, He will bless the words of your hands. Why can't you believe God? Let God be true and let every man be a liar. Let this particular scripture be in your mind. Numbers 23, verse 19. You know, when you have that scripture in mind, you are not afraid of anyone. It doesn't matter who the person is. Many of you, when you go around and you see some little prophet who begin to put fear in you, now you are shaking. But you don't know who you are. God is not a man that he should lie. Have you seen it? God is not a man that he should lie. So God says it. I believe it. He settles it. God says it. I believe it. He settles it. I will not stay here for long because this place is polluted. So I am moving. They say, ah, oh, she. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I'll be an if you. No. You cannot be like the mice in the, in, the, in the book. Go and look for that book. Who moved my cheese so that I can now move? Because the cheese will soon finish. Hallelujah. Number two thing that I'm sharing with you again is that if we must move to the next level, you must work in integrity. Work in what? Work in what? Integrity is very, very key. Integrity is very, very key. Integrity is key to doing exploits. Daniel maintained his integrity, yes, was very relevant. When you have integrity, moving forward is easy. But when you don't have integrity and you are living a double life, every day you are looking back, how many people can run and remittance and look back and, be, and win? By the time you turn your head and you look again, somebody's already gone. So if you must move forward, you must not be leaving taking coal behind you. Walk in integrity. Let your yes be your yes and let your no be your no. Don't be living a double life. Don't be doing what? Living a double life. Let's look at this scripture. Very, very important. Psalm 25, verse 90 to 21. I want to explain why you need integrity on the face. Oh, they hate me. My enemies are many. Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Wow, I'm not if you can identify is that true. Yes, they are many. They hate us with cruel hatred, but what's the answer? 20. Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. It's a prayer. Look at the answer God gave. 21. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. So what preserves you from enemies? So if you are not working in integrity and uprightness, you will be stagnated. It is a weight. So you don't even know where to go. So you think the whole world is against you. You don't even know where to go. You know, you go and fake some results here and there. You go and fake something here and there. You go and tell some lies here and there. Now the next time you have to go there for an open door, you have told a lie. Are you here with me? Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. Walk in the integrity of the word of God. Walk in the integrity of the fear of the Lord. Today, the fear of the Lord is no more in the church. And if you understand what I'm trying to say, look at what you do and what I do, and you will see whether we still fear God or not. Whilst you are in church and you'll be doing things that even unbelievers will not do, what should that you fear God? Job chapter 1 verse 1, look at the meaning of fearing God. Competence will take you somewhere, but character is what will keep you there. 
Beauty will take you into marriage, but character will keep you there. So if you don't have a, if you have a stinky character, your beauty will be there, but your beauty will look like ugliness. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that fears God and he eschewed. Oh, are you here with me? The one that fear God and he eschewed what? Evil. Which that if you fear God, you must hate evil. If you say you fear God and you don't hate evil, you don't fear God. Work in the integrity of your character and work in the integrity of your conviction beliefs and philosophies. There, is, there are things that you know you believe. There are things that are your conviction. Work in those convictions. Don't just be switching. Today I believe this. Tomorrow I don't believe it again. I believe this one. Tomorrow, No, 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 no. no. People will not take it serious. Stand for what you believe. Sometimes it can be very difficult, but stand for what you believe. We call it integrity. Not today you have said it, and tomorrow you change. Can I tell you something? Please, as much as possible, it's very difficult, but as much as possible, don't place a price on yourself. Don't do what? Don't place a price on yourself. Don't place a price on your conviction. Can I give you uh, 5,000 CDs for you to go and steal? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't like it. I'm a Christian. Okay, I'll give you 50,000. No, no, no. I'll give you 5 million Ghana to go and steal. Are you sure? You don't have integrity. You don't have integrity because there is a, you, have, you have placed a tag on yourself. It is so easy, you know. Life will try to put a price on you. But the question is that, what is your price? If you have a price, you can easily be bought. And you become a man without integrity. Everybody wants to trap you, especially when you are a Christian. And they will trap you to see whether you have integrity or not. Hallelujah. Walk in integrity if you must move to the next level. The next point is that walk in righteousness. Walk in what? Righteousness. Having the right standing with God. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't en enjoy sin. Let me tell you something. Sin is a sinker of destiny. Sin is a weight. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. And we say we are moving to the what? To the next level. Is that not so? Next level. How can you move to the next level carrying cement? It becomes too weighty. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let me make a simple analogy. From today, sin will never have control over you again in the name of Jesus. You didn't, I said, from today, sin will never have control over you anymore in the name of Jesus. Let me ask a few, a few questions. Analogy. Oh, as for me, dear, oh, when I see women in skirts, I cannot stand them. I can't control myself. I cannot do anything. I feel like finishing them. So assuming here you are, and you are, you say you cannot control yourself. Is that not also? So you become like a robot, zombie. Now here you are, you are with a woman. Giddy, giddy, giddy. The woman say, I want to tell you something before you move on. I want to tell you something. Say, I am HIV positive. Will you continue or not? Will you continue or not? Oh, I cannot control myself, so let me go, let me finish it. It means that you can't, you, you will run. So what did you say? It tells you that you have control. No, it tells you you have what? Control. When Esau met Jacob, and he said, take my birthright and give me food. Assuming Jacob told him that this food contains poison, would he have eaten it? Would he that he could have gone with that anger without dying? It is indiscipline that makes us to joke with sin. It is indiscipline. It is not because you cannot control, you can control. Assuming you say, I'm so tired, so I don't want to even bath. I'm so tired, and you're lying on your bed. I wish someone could even come and carry me. So I cannot even wake myself up. And all of a sudden you hear, go, 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 go. With your same buster shorts, if it is only nakedness, you will get to 400 meters away from your house before you realize that it was cocoa. With that, you have the energy. It is in discipline. Simple. It's in discipline. I'm not if you agree with me. We can do it. 
Many of you go, instead of you sit down to read Bible small, you say, oh, I'm so tired. They will tell you, echo shine. Sabe, you will still go there for two hours. Open your eyes like this when you're still feeling sleepy. It's simply that we have what it takes. It is only in discipline and lack of self-control. That's how we do what we do. I pray that God will deliver us in the name of Jesus. Sin is a sinker of destiny. It has destroyed so many destinies. So don't joke with sin if you must move to the next level. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs 14, 34. May the Lord deliver us today in the name of Jesus. He said, for us to run the race, for us to move to the next level, sin and the weight must be taken away from us. Righteousness exalts a nation. Are you seeing there? With me, righteousness makes you very light so you can fly. You can move very fast. You can be thrown up there. But sin is a reproach to any person, any people. It doesn't matter who you are. Sin is bad, even for unbelievers. Hello? Is that right? Is it true? Sin is even bad for unbelievers. Sin is even bad for juju men. Sin is even bad for the ritualist. Sin is even bad for them. Okay, when a ritualist go and rape a girl, where will, where will he land himself? In prison. When they, they say, but you are not a believer, so no problem. You, only, you can continue doing it. So that's why you must not joke. Don't say, I'm a believer, and that's why I don't want to chase women. If you are an unbeliever, and you go and chase a woman with HIV AIDS, you will get it. If you are a pastor and apostle, and you go and chase the same woman with HIV AIDS, you will get it. It's a reproach unto any people, not some people, any, everyone. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I pray that may the Lord give us grace to stay away from sin in the name of Jesus. Now, what will righteousness do for you? I'm the righteousness of Christ. But the Bible says, whosoever doeth righteous is righteous. So there's the doing of righteousness. Psalm 92, verse 12 and 13. Look at what righteousness will do. Beautiful. Beautiful. Righteousness. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Are you seeing that? Is that not next level? The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Wow. I don't know if you want to grow like the palm tree. But even in old age, you can still bear fruit. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the court of our God. Verse 14. Beautiful. They shall still bring forth fruit in what? Old age. Ah, can't you see some of our old women who have lived good lives? When they are talking to you, can't you see the, the, some pride? But those who have plenty scars and they have wasted their lives, sometimes you go to funeral and you see some old ladies that say this one, they are oh, yeah, bunny. They have wasted their lives. Ah, they are still wasting it in old age. Not bearing any fruit. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Hallelujah. Walk in righteousness. Walk in righteousness pays. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. 7 and 8. Align your character to the character of God. Love what God loves. Align yourself to God's dwelling in this word and prayer daily. Flee sin and every appearance of evil. Do what? Flee sin and every appearance of evil. First Timothy. Sorry. First Timothy 4 7. But refuse profane. Do what? Is it in the Bible? Refuse what? Ah, you see Christians walking and they are having a chat by and you wonder. The things that are being said from their mouth. Chatting with people on the phone. Christian. Talking about all manner of things. That even unbelievers may not even talk about. The Bible says refuse it. And old wise fable. And exercise thyself unto godliness. Discipline yourself unto the godliness. Why? Verse 8. For bodily exercise profit a little. But godliness is profitable unto all things. Godliness is profitable unto what? Godliness is profitable unto what? 
everything. Okay, analysis, simple analysis. Prof, you don't have a girlfriend apart from your wife. Are you not safe? Are you afraid of any STD? Is your money not enough for you? Do you have to be lying? Must you, must you stay late because you must go and hide behind the toilet and be chatting with another woman? Don't you have peace? Don't you have rest? Ah, bah. But bodily exercise profited little. But godliness is profitable in all things. So in your money, it is profitable. You know, when I sleep, I sleep. When my phone rings, I don't care whether someone me pick it or not. I don't know who is going to call me. That is going to be a secret. It's profitable unto what? All things. When I go to work, I come home quickly. Having the promise of the life that is now and of that which is to come. So when you are living in godliness, there's profitability here and there's profitability what? In the years to come. Are we getting something? Are you learning something? Your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus. The next one is that work in excellence. To move to the next level, excellence. Mm. I can see my brother over here is a tailor. What differentiates two people? It's not the three years they have all gone to learn tailoring. It is the finishing. The finishing. One lady sews for me. Almost most of the things that I wear, she sews for me. She, ha she has never measured me once. She, ha she has never measured me. One day someone just gave her one of my attacks. And I mean, in fact, I'm growing. But she sews every time she sews and represents. Someone will measure you from head to toe till your body is paining you. They will still go and sew 39, 40. Excellence is key. The difference between what you can they watch it and another person's watch it that people are not buying is excellence. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. For you to move to the next level, you must have the spirit of excellence. Let have a touch of excellence. No matter how small it may look like, no matter how uh, informal it may look like, let there be a touch of excellence. Then this Daniel was preferred above the president and princess. I decree that you shall receive favor. Amen. I say you shall receive favor. Amen. In your office, you shall have favor. Amen. In your school, you shall have favor. Amen. In your area, you shall have favor. Amen. In the church, you shall have favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Excellence. That's it. Finish, you know. Cake is normal cake. But the reason why you go to some place going by is finishing. Is that not so? Excellence is a spirit. Because an excellent spirit was with him. And the king thought to set him over their own realm. What differentiates two people who have degree is the spirit of excellence. The finishing. The extra mile. The plus one. What are you adding on to what you do? What are you adding on? Are you excellent in what you do? Or you do things biara biara? Hallelujah. Psalm 8, verse 1. I'm not afraid of creating the image of God. O oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name. You know, sometimes, dog, you are, you are the dog. When something moves a little bit in the tummy, in, in, in the body, see, look at the problem. When something moves a little bit out of its position, look at how you suffer. Appendix, something small enter that is not supposed to enter, then problem. And you think that one mistake will, do, will be nothing. You think this one they say, yes, never fear no but I know can I can keep my blue if button white and I will be fear no If I give you a drop of poison in your jollof, if you look a whole one small mistake has collapsed someone's whole company, Mawaku. All because they fail to pay attention to details. They fail to pay attention to, to the spirit of excellence. One small thing. I pray that God will give us that spirit of excellence. That will have eyes for details. Hallelujah. Very, very important. If you must be set above someone, the difference is excellence. You must be set above people who sing. The singers, excellence. You'll be made a leader. Excellence. You'll be made, it, it's about excellence. What value are you adding to what you are doing? Taking things for granted and not serious is an enemy of excellence. Don't ever treat people 
with, with, with impunity. Treat everyone with seriousness. Make a baby over any or the coffee of saying Ali. That small child is an ambassador. The way you do it will cause both to come again or not. Are you with me? We are here to move to the next level. Are we ready to go? I believe we are catching something because next year by this time we must have a testimony. Something over here must shift something in, your, in our mind that we will go out there and become better and come here next and say that since last year I have moved to the next level. Acknowledge that what you do is for God. Eh? If you are sowing for Jesus, I will lose sow it. I believe the one who sold Jesus at that saw it so well that even when they crucified him, they couldn't even cut it. They wanted to use it as Lutu. Nice one. How are you also doing your own? The very job you are doing, how do you do it? Be committed to your assignment. Be what? Be committed to your assignment. Don't do it any way, anyhow. You won't get far. And be innovative in whatever you do. Be what? Innovative. How can I make it better? What value can I add to it? And always try to improve upon it. Always have okay plus one. Set structures, systems, and order. Do what? Set structures, order, and systems. Amen. The next one is that you must walk in love. You must do what? Walk in love. In fact, the next level is for those who love. Should I prove it for you in the Bible? The next level is for those who love. I've always said that you cannot really start business without being in love. Because every time you start business, you must solve someone's problem. So if you are not ready to solve someone's problem and you are not working in love, you will not survive in the, in, in the, in the business. If the business you are doing is because you want to make money, you will make small money and that will be the end. Are you with me? 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, quickly. We are moving on. The next few minutes will be done and we'll pray. I'm never ready for the next level. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor yet heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So which means next level is for what? Is for lovers of God. Do you agree with me? Next level is for what? Is for lovers of God. If you don't love God, going to the next level will be difficult. If you don't have love, you'll be carrying so much bitterness, hatred, anger. That is too heavy for you. Love the Lord your God with everything in you because first, he first loved us. And he called us to save him. Second point you must know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do what? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Prove your love to God by serving him in whatever capacity you find yourself acceptable. I wanted to read a certain scripture along the same line, Colossians 3, 23 and 24. We are moving to the next level. I said, the risk you have taken for coming for this conference is that whether you like it or yes, something will change. I don't know if I agree with me. Whether you like it or yes, something is changing. You, you, can't, you can't finish this, this, this conference and nothing will change. Even those who are watching online, something is changing already. Someone is, is shifting the plans right now in the name of Jesus. For whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Verse 24. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Christ. 25. One, two, go. Shall we read it together? But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And there is no respect of persons. God is no respecter of persons. Okay, if your brother or your sister cooks, and every day, kakalika, kwakwe, ekbeni eni emi, e holo and there's another enemy who is also selling the same food at another place, which one will you go and buy? Ko yen go to buy the tuachu mukuna ahi, ka ye bi e ya bi ene. Because God is no respecter of persons. Why is this person not giving me this job to do? When they give you that job to do, you will do it biara, biara. So they will go and pay huge and take it somewhere else. Hallelujah. 
We must love our neighbors to love ourselves. We must love by we must love God by giving, giving open doors, giving catapults into your destiny. The next one, time is going quickly. The next one, we must walk in the anointing. Because just walking by your strength, you may not be able to go far. The anointing is what makes all the difference. The what? The anointing is what makes all the difference. Let's look at something in Isaiah 45. Have you been blessed? Have you learned something? Is something changing in your mind already? I believe you are going to make some decisions. Hallelujah. We always say that, ah, unbelievers are doing well and we are not doing well. Did you say God is no respecter of person? Did you see that one? Did you see that one? God is no respecter of persons. And when we were reading about righteousness shall exalt a nation, but sin is a reproach unto any people. So there are certain principles in life. It doesn't matter whether you are a believer or an unbeliever. Giorgio Armani may not be a believer. But you go to Katamanton or you go to Chinese or, or, or the shops and you go and buy Giorgio Armani suit. Giorgio Armani doesn't know you. He didn't measure you. But yet when you put it, you say, ah, and they call me, pepe, pepe, they call me. Okay. And the one who didn't measure, he said, he doesn't speak in tongues. But there, because there are principles in life. That's the other Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus. Cyrus was a hidden king. Cyrus was not a believer. Cyrus was not a Jew. But God, that's the Lord who is anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding to subdue nations before him. To do what? To subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaf gate. And the gate shall not be shut. Look at what God said again. Verse 2. I will go before him when he's moving. God is moving with him. What makes the difference? What is making the difference over there? The anointing. I will go before him and I will make the crooked places what? Straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in asunder the bars of iron. You like to read the verse 3? You like the verse 3? I believe you love it. Verse 3. Verse 3, quickly. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. How many of you like treasures? It is the anointing that opens up the treasures for you. So when you are living your life anyhow, come and pray. I won't pray. Come to church. I won't come to church. Fasting. Then you go and hide and you eat. Congratulations. And we are fasting for three days. And you say, oh, me dear. I won't fast too. Congratulations. I go. The results will always show. We have all come here for this conference. The results will show. The results will show. Verse 4. And I will give you hidden riches of secret places. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, will be with thee. That thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. May the Lord give you treasures of darkness in the name of Jesus. The anointing. What does he do again? Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Because of the anointing, every yoke shall be broken. And every burden shall be destroyed. Engage the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Engage the ministry of the what? Of the Holy Spirit. You need the anointing. You need help from God. You need grace from God. Oh God, this business I'm about to start, I need supernatural speed. I must step up again. Oh God, I need your grace. Tonight we shall be having an anointing service. But not the, the physical one we shall have it, but the spiritual one must be there because we need, the, the, we need supernatural shift. You know, when God is catapulting you, it's beautiful. By your own strength, you can never go far. Hallelujah. Concerning the anointing, engage the ministry of the Holy Spirit daily in prayer and studying the word of God and in holiness. Anointing without holiness will start thinking. Hello? Anointing without holiness will start thinking. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1.
Can we all read this together? Maybe you have never seen it before. Underline it. Dead flies. Call, you know, cause the ointment. You know what the meaning of the ointment? What does it stand for? Is that oil? Is that not anointing? But it says dead flies. Cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savour. Anointing with unholiness and impurity will cause you to stink. So that's a little folly. Say a little folly. Say a little folly. A little foolishness. A little hiding in the, in, 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 behind the wall and kiss that little small girl. A little folly. They catch you. That's your end. A little folly. Let me see this one small. A little. Not, that, that may be the very first time you are doing it. But a little folly. What, small thing, though. What caused the problem in the world are not bigger, bigger things, oh. They are small, small things. They cause the problem. A little folly. Him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. A little folly. You must engage in holiness to maintain the sweet smelling savour of the anointing. Anointing without holiness will do what? Want to go. Anointing without holiness will do what? Anointing without holiness will do what? Be planted in the house of the Lord. Serve your way to the anointing. Serve faithfully the apostle set over your life. Serve faithfully in the ministry. Engage in prayer and fasting often. Do you know what fasting does? When you see that you are getting appetite for bad things, start fasting. It means that the flesh is active. It's too active. Kill the flesh. Sacrifice. Wake up midnight. In the name of Jesus, I come against you. I mortify this flesh. I die to the flesh. I live to the spirit. There was a man who went to a shopping mall. Pastor. Then he saw a beautiful woman. Ah! The flesh started agitating. So when the woman was coming from this way, he also started moving from this to another direction. Then the woman also crossed him. Then they were meeting. He said, No. Then he started speaking declaration. I died to the flesh. I live to the spirit. I die to the flesh. Then raised up his head to look into the mirror. Then in the mirror, the woman was the one standing in the mirror, hundred percent. The man dropped everything he had gone to buy, still blowing tongues and say, "I die to the flesh. I live to the spirit." He got to the entrance of the shopping mall, went to sit in his car, and drove away. It is better to leave your attire like Joseph than to finish your destiny. It is better you lose your job than to destroy your destiny. A little folly. Hallelujah. Engage in prayer often. Jesus retained the power of the Holy Ghost after fasting and prayers. Finally, before we pray, is that walk in wisdom. You know, obviously, you know, I cannot preach all these things without talking about wisdom. Walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. Isaiah 33, verse 6, because of time, I will not read all the scriptures. Isaiah 33 and verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time. And strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Why do you need the wisdom again? Because you should be able to make discern, you must be discerning and you must be able to make the right decision. Are you, are you here with me? Now let's look at this scripture. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 to 3. We'll pray. Say so we'll pray. You need it for this thing called wisdom. You need it. You need it. Wisdom and power. You need it. And we have just finished the power. That's the anointing. You need wisdom. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Verse 12. Verse 2, sorry. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So number one, what is that? The spirit of the Lord. Number two, the spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of the knowledge of, and of the fear of the Lord. I pray that may the spirit of the Lord rest upon us in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of wisdom come upon you in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of understanding come upon you in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of counsel come upon you in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of might come upon you in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of understanding come upon you in the name of Jesus. May the fear of the Lord be your portion in the name of Jesus. When you have this one, verse 3, look at what you'll be able to do. 
and shall make him of quick understanding. Please, as we are living here tonight, whenever you want to ask for wisdom, open this scripture and read. But God will give you what? Quick understanding. Things that people are finding difficult to understand, you understand cheaply. All the students over here, this is the prayer you must be praying. And it shall make him of what? Quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Did you hear that one? He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. There is something beyond. And I'm talking about wisdom that's from above. Neither reproof after the hearing of his ears. Verse 4. And with righteousness shall he judge the poor. So you can never be working on righteousness. On righteousness, you are working in wisdom. No. No. Wisdom moves with righteousness. And with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with the equity of the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. So how do you engage in this wisdom? Ask God for the wisdom. Number one. Number two. Wisdom is a rightful application of knowledge. Therefore, go after knowledge. Yesterday, Doc took us through that one. Go after knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. If you don't have knowledge, you'll be destroyed. If you don't have knowledge, God will forget about you. If you don't have knowledge, God will reject you. Learn. Read books. Listen to messages. Those of you who have been skipping my, my, my messages that I labor to write and send to you and you don't read. Congratulations. When the time comes, you know the only thing, I'll refer you. Do you remember this thing that I wrote? Go and look for it and, and, and read. Bishop Oedipo said, the reason why he will not spend one hour with anybody is because he has written too many books. So you come now, nah, there was a problem. My business, so hold on, I'm coming. Give me. Exploit in financial breakthrough. Go and read. Three months time, come and see me. Case die. After writing all this, he wants me to continue talking. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. If you don't have knowledge, you can never have wisdom because wisdom is the application of knowledge. Be obedient to the word of God and apply the word of God. Do what? Apply the word of God. 4 verse 9, Philippians. I believe we all know that scripture right now. Let's be outstanding as we are getting ready to pray. Say do. Oh, you didn't say it was. Say do. We have heard all this. We have heard everything. The Bible says those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. Say do. Oh, you didn't say it well. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you always. We have heard enough on this mountain. And this evening too, I have added enough. And I pray that we shall receive the grace to be obedient. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. If you are willing and obedient, you shall move to the next level. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So you have heard it. You have a desire in your heart. I must move to the next level. I must change level. Enough is enough. This begging must stop. This, this, this borrowing must stop. This buying on credit must stop. This, this singleness must stop. Something in my life must change. The desire is now there. Hey, can I tell you? You are, the, you are the only person your family is waiting for to change their level. And that's why when you are coming to church, they may not be coming with you, but they are thanking God for your life. You don't know. You didn't get it. I said, you coming to church, your family may not be coming with you, but they are happy. Because they know that something will change in your life. And when there's a shift, they also shift. But you must, now that you are willing, you must be obedient. And you must eat the good of the land. You lift up your voice and begin to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I have heard the word. Father, grace. Father, give me grace to be obedient. To be able to apply your word. May I not just be a hearer of the word, but may I be a doer of the word. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, may I be a doer of the word. May I be a doer of the word. 
May I be a doer of the word. May I not just be a hearer of the word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Repapa lekete. Eko raka ya gadabalose. Le prakatwa. E rababaliete. Eko rapa. Lo prokoto keteke. Eko rabadia. Razu zekete. La rababia kata. Randa la gadabalose. Father, I have heard from you. I have heard from you. From Monday up to today. Oh God. Grace, oh Lord. To abide by your word. Grace, oh Lord. To walk in the kisa. Grace, oh Lord. To go with the keys that you have given unto us, the key of faith, the key of desire, the key of prayer, the key of revelation, the key of integrity, the key of righteousness, the key of excellence, the key of love, the key of anointing, the key of wisdom, grace, O Lord, to walk by them, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, Repa Palo, Ekotokoranda, Isasasa, La Prakatwa, Siprekete Koranda, Rapa Pal. Are you praying already? Are you praying already? Something is in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Rapa Yakatane Rapa Palo Ekotokoranda Rapa Tikete La Rapa Bado Ekorandi Libedebe Repekete Isozada Rapa Balekete Rapa Dabadosa Rapa Palo Ekoranda Ligadose in the mighty name of Jesus we are praying one more prayer Father in the name of Jesus every area that I have been stagnating oh God let there be a shift let there be a shift. Amen. Anything that has been holding me down before today. Oh God, deliver me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh God, deliver me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Set me free that I will move to the next level. Any lim mental limitation. I have told you you can be at the top. Jesus. The top is so open. Have you ever seen two birds clashing before? No. Hey, the earth, the heaven is so open. You can still be there. You can still be there. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, take me to the next level. Take me to the next level. I am ready to get there. I am ready to get there. In my finances, to the next level. As a ministry, we are moving to the next level. No more stagnation. No more disappointment. In the mighty name of Jesus. Repapalo. Erakatiata. Ababalo. Repekete. Rakatiata. We are moving to the next level. We are moving to the next level. We are changing levels. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. E rapa ya katande. E rapa balababa. E korose lekete. E rapa balikadose. E rapa ya kata. E rapa liande lekete. E rapa balo. E rada rada ba. E delekete. E rapa balo. E korada le. E dalabadosa. E rapa ya kata. E dilibedebe. E korapa. Papa, papa, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now you are going to decree and declare to your own life. All the anchor scriptures that we read. The first one said, Arise and depart. How many of you heard that scripture? Arise and depart. So who will arise for you? So it is a personal decision. The second one also said that you have been around this mountain for too long a time. Therefore, turn northward. Who is going to turn? Personal responsibility. The Bible says that, he said, this mountain, you have been here for too long. Move again. Who is going to take that decision? Apostle Paul said, this one thing I do. This one thing I do. Forgetting the things in the past and pressing on. Moving to the next level is your personal responsibility. Therefore, you are going to make a pledge to yourself. You are going to declare and declare that from today, I am moving to the next level. No more stagnation. I will not stay here for long. I will not stay here anymore. I am moving to the next level. No one will do it for me. I am moving to the next level in my finances, in my spiritual life. Yes, my prayer life is changing. My, my Bible reading life is changing. My righteousness life is changing. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. You are moving to the next level. Yes, 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 yes. I am moving to the next level. I am moving to the next level. I am moving to the next level. In my spiritual life, I am moving to the next level. In my mental life, I am moving to the next level. In my emotional life, I am moving to the next level. In my physical life, I am moving to the next level. In my mental life, I am moving to the next level. In my marital life, I am moving to the next level. In my emotional life, I am moving to the next level. In the mighty name of Jesus, next level. Grace, next level anointing, next level grace, next level anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. No more stagnation. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I am moving on. I am moving on. I am moving on with speed. Repekete, ekuraka ya galaba, eraba balikete, ekuraba ba, eraba balabarose, eranda la galaba, eraba balikete, eraba balo, ekuranda la galabarose, eraba balo, ekuranda la galabarose. 
Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we are going to engage the supernatural. Lift up your hand. And you are going to do these declarations with me. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please don't take this session for granted at all. Amen. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am moving to the next level. I am moving to the next level. The Lord will catapult me. The Lord will catapult me. And my family. And my family. To the next level. To the next level. Of greatness and progress. Of greatness and progress. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The supernatural power. Supernatural power. Of God. Of God. Shall redirect. Shall redirect. My path. My path. For the next level. For the next level. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shall move. I shall move to my next level. To my next level of soundness, of soundness and advancement, and advancement in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the anointing, the anointing for next level, for next level shall locate me. Shall locate me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Lord, the Lord shall catapult me. Shall catapult. And my destiny, and my destiny to the next level, to the next level of happiness, of happiness and fulfillment, fulfillment in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the Almighty God, the Almighty God will transform my life, will transform my life in the life of my family, in that of my family, in the life of the church, in the life of the church, into the next level, the next level of breakthroughs, of breakthroughs and successes, and successes in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Jesus, mighty hand of God, mighty hand of God will uplift my family, will uplift my family, and will uplift myself, will uplift myself, will uplift the, the church, will uplift the to the, to the next level of celebration, of celebration and, jubilation and jubilation in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every power Every standing between me standing between and me. my next level is destroyed, destroyed now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every, adversary Every adversary that is injuring me, that is injuring or, me blocking or blocking me from, me from entering from ent into my next level is destroyed now destroyed by now. the power of the by Holy the Ghost, Ghost. Ghost in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every Jesus. demonic barrier Any Barrier, every demonic barrier, every demonic barrier standing, on my next level standing on my next level shall be consumed by fire, by fire. In, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus the power of God, the power of God shall destroy that shall destroy every, power every power standing against my next level my next in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus the spirit of the Lord the shall, of God. Guide and lead me shall guide and lead me to my next level, my next level. In, the in the name of Jesus every power, every power working against me working against and my next level and my next shall be crushed shall be crushed in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every stronghold every stronghold impeding my next level impeding my next level and manipulating my life is being destroyed now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every power every power every spirit every spirit contending with me contending with concerning my next level my next level is destroyed now is destroyed now it's been destroyed now it's been destroyed in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every demonic assignment every demonic assignment against my life against my life concerning my next level concerning my next level against my family against my family concerning the next level concerning the next level against the church against the concerning our next level we come Against it, now. Come against it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The power of dynamics. The power of dynamics. Acceleration. Acceleration. Is my portion. Is my portion. In the mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Of Jesus. I will get to the next level. I will get to the next level with perfect ease. With perfect ease. With speed. With speed. With acceleration. With acceleration. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any power. Any power that doesn't want me. That doesn't want me to get to my next level. To get to my next level. Is shattered right now. Is shattered right it now. Is Right now, in, right the now. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my next level, my next level shall embarrass, shall embarrass, and shall disgrace, and shall disgrace my enemies, my enemies. In the name of Jesus, in the name clap of Jesus, clap your hands and pray right now. Rapa kati lebreke teka pa, repa kaya gada badosi, leke teko rapa ya gada, rapa pa leke to, leke teka pa, razu seke te, i rapa pa lo, raza zaka ya gada, i rapa kato leke te, i rapa ya gada, i rapa ya gada. La papa nikete, every limitation of my life, every limitation of my life, every limitation in any area of my life, I am not enjoying now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I am not enjoying now. Every adversary standing between me and my next level, standing between me and my next level, I am not enjoying now. Am I open now? Am I enjoying 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 now? 
First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. He said, A great and effectual door is open unto us, but there are many adversaries. A great and effectual door. I told you, your next level will come for the next devil. The next level will come for the next devil. And that's why you must contend. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3 and 23. We are going to pray that warfare prayer once again. You must stand against them. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3. You have compared this mountain long enough, turn you northward. But look at what God said. Go to 23 quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. We are praying. Fast, fast, fast. Okay, come to 24. Rise ye up. Take your journey. And pass over to the river Anon. Behold, I have given unto you. I have done what? I have given. So, it has been handed over. God is giving already. But remember, Daniel prayed for 21 days. There was a priest of Persian holding on to the, to, the, to the answer of Daniel. Anything that will try to contend with you, we are contending with them now in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. He said, Behold, I have given unto into your hand Sihon, the Amorite, king of Ishbon, and his land. Begin to possess it. We do what? Begin to possess. So as we are living here, don't go and sit down and tell the thing will come. No, you must go and possess. God says, I have given you, but you must go and possess. And when you are going to possess, it will not be given to you on a silver platter. You must go and contend. He said, and contend with him in battle. Contend with him in battle. In the name of, lift up one hand. Say, 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 in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any Red Sea. Any Red Sea. Any Goliath. Any Goliath. Standing between me. Standing between me. And my celebration. And my celebration. And my happiness. And my happiness. And my fulfillment. And my fulfillment. And my open door. And my open door. You are destroyed now. You are destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Any king of Amorite. Any king of Amorite. Any sea on the Amorite. Any king of Ishbon that is preventing me that is preventing me from going to the next level from going to the next level in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus down right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every recipe before, every recipe before, recipe before me. me. And my promise and my and promise will command, command you parted right now. command you parted right now. Anything, anything, anything that shall stand against that me. That stand against, against me. Any adversary. Any adversary. That stand against that me. Stand against and my breakthrough. And my breakthrough. And my next level. And my next level. I command them down. I command them down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. command them destroyed now. command them destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
the name of Jesus. Any voice, any voice that is speaking against my blessing, that is speaking against my next level. That is speaking against my next level. In the name of Jesus, we command it destroyed now. We command it destroyed now. We command it destroyed now. Every adversary, every adversary between me, that is between me and my next level, to be destroyed now. To be destroyed now. Right now. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. 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 Pray.
people will be asking, where have you been? In fact, they will, they will know. Ah, no wonder. Next level. No wonder. Next level. Oh, you have moved. Yes. And we are not going to move slowly. We are moving with speed. Cry yet, saying, that's yet the Lord of hosts. My city through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. God has declared. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion. May the Lord comfort you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And yet shall yet choose Jerusalem. Verse 18. Verse 18, quickly. Then lifted up my eyes and saw and behold four horns. These are stoppable things. I pray that you shall be unstoppable in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say you shall be unstoppable in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. So as you live today, anything that will come and look like a horn, you are going to crush them. Amen. I say you are going to do what? Crush them. Amen. Because God has declared the horns will come. Every time God speaks, they raise up. Mm. But you have the power to crush. Yes. Then lift up my eyes and saw and behold four horns. Verse 19. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be this? Out of confusion. You shall never ask what to be this. You will deal with them. Amen. And he answered me, say, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Anything that has ever destroyed your family, anything that has destroyed your brothers and sisters, anything that has destroyed your friends, they shall never destroy you in the name of Jesus. Amen. They come to this guy and say, don't you know me? I'm the one. Don't you know your mother died of this one? Don't you know your sisters are also suffering this one? You too, if you don't think you suffer this one, it might not you in the name of Jesus. Amen. It shall never come to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. These are the horns. You see, they are giving the pedigree. These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Oh, it would have discouraged everyone. I pray that may every spirit of discouragement destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You are moving here with a spirit of boldness in the yes, name of Lord. Jesus. Amen. Yes, I say Lord. you are living here with a spirit of boldness in the name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. Verse, verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Say four carpenters. Four, four carpenters. carpenters. Say four carpenters. Four, four carpenters. carpenters. So we are going to pray for the carpenters right what now. Because as for the horns, when we have the carpenters, we will crush them. What do the carpenters do? 21. Then said I, what come this to do? With all these horns that I'm seeing, what are these carpenters coming to do? And he said, he spake, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, that no man did lift up his head. If people in your family cannot lift up their head, it's not that people are not moving to the next level. I declare and I declare to your life that you are moving now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. No horn shall keep you under the bed anymore. Amen. You are coming out in, in, out of obscurity. Yes. You are coming to a limelight in the name of yes, Jesus. Lord. Amen. These are the horns which have scattered Judah that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to free them. These are what? Come to destroy them. To cast out the horn of the Gentiles which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Every horn that has been lifted up against you, the carpenters are destroying them now in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Therefore, we are praying this last prayer. What are some of the carpenters? We are mentioning the carpenters. Plenty of them. Pick four of them or whatever number you want to pick. By the spirit of faith, I come against every spirit of fear. I, I, I get in the prayer point now. By the spirit of faith, I come against every spirit of fear. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear in me, Shut die up. now in the name of Jesus. Yes, yeah. Then you can mention again, Shut by the spirit up. of knowledge, I come against every spirit of ignorance. In the mighty name of Jesus, and all the negative things are destructive. Therefore, you are praying, Father, in the name of Jesus, as I pick the carpenter, every horn that shows up in my life is crashed yes. now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray right now. <laughs> Rabos <laughs> <laughs> 
God, our nation, O God, we shall be exalted. I will declare, O God, abide in the mountain, that the moon is breaking. I will declare, O God, apply your wisdom, apply your wisdom, apply your wisdom. How we are waiting our Lord, apply our God's command, our liberty, apply our walls of pain, and the truth of our broken walls, our liberty, and the delegate. Jesus. You shall be the head and not the tail. Amen. I say, you shall be the head and not the tail. Amen. You shall be at the top only and not beneath. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Nothing shall hold you down anymore. Amen. You shall no more be in obscurity. Amen. You shall come to the limelight. Oh, I can wait to you. Now you are coming out now. Yes. Amen. I say you are coming out now. In the name Amen. of Jesus. You are coming out now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the Jesus. mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone who has ever given you a bad name, Amen. they shall come and celebrate you with a good name. Yes. Amen. They shall celebrate you with a good name. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I decree prophetically into your life that every blessing that is yours. That has been hanging yeah. anywhere. Right now, they are being released now. Yes. Amen. They are being released now. Yes. They are being released now. Amen. They are being released now. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In every area of your life, you are moving to the next level. Yes. Amen. In your finances, yes. you are moving to the next level. Yes. Amen. In your health, you are moving to the next level. Amen. In your marital status, you are moving to the next level. Amen. Amen. In your mentality, you are moving to the next level. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. no more stagnation. Yes. Amen. No more stagnation. Yes. Amen. No more disappointment. Yes. Amen. No more disfavor. Amen. No more failure. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I declare and I declare mm. that from today, mm. progress shall be your portion. Amen. Speed shall be your portion. Amen. Amen. Speed shall be your portion. Amen. Prosperity shall be your portion. Amen. Amen. Success shall be your portion. Amen. Amen. You shall walk in the fear of the Lord. Amen. All the days of your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. People shall celebrate you. Amen. You shall be celebrated. Yes. Amen. You shall be celebrated. Yes. Amen. You shall be celebrated. Yes. Amen. You shall never give up on the way. Amen. You shall win the race. Amen. You shall end the race. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The prize there for you. Amen. You shall have the prize. Yes. Amen. It is well with you. You. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are praying Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Mami, there is soldier. Yeah. Bring the anointing away from you. Ah, mami, princess. Ah, a friend. Ah, mami, yeah, 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 so, so, red. Hey. So Yeah, 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 yeah